Brenda Clues, and we're actually going to have Karen Schenfeld, uh, one of our other Guernica poets, introduce her. Well, the word, the word multi-talented is often used very loosely these days. But I would say that that word, multi-talented, honestly describes my friend and colleague, Brenda Klutz. She is a multimedia poet, visual artist, dancer, videographer, and impresario who pursues all of her endeavors with a plum. She's very well known on the Toronto scene for her readings, dances, and exhibits. And she's very greatly appreciated for running the poetry and music salons, at which many of us here have read and performed. Luciano's Lyrical Miracle Press published her chapbook, The Luminist Poems, in 2013. Today, I'm greatly honored to be introducing Brenda. I met her several years ago, but then we realized that we had both been published when we were students at York University in the same journal by Irving Layton. And I think that if Irving, who is also a friend of Leonard Cohen's, so they both have passed away. I think if Irving could be here today, he'd be sitting there like a very proud father to see that one student, myself, is introducing Brenda Clues. So please come up here, Brenda, to read from your newest book, titled Fury. So thank you, Karen, for that wonderful introduction. And hello, everyone. <laughs> What a great crowd, and I'm so honored to have my book, Tidal Fury, included in this roster of terrific writing by terrific authors. Tidal Fury has been a long time coming. I wrote the first draft during intense months in 2006, and then it sat in a drawer until 2013, when Guernica accepted it. Uh, much of the artwork is from the same time period or close to it. And the book is really a pan to coming out from under, breaking free of entrapments, speaking our own voices, learning how to silence the critic within so that we may give of our vision, our poetry, it is a book composed of many styles of writing, poetry, prose poetry, prose, uh, theory, uh, epistles, and even half of a telephone conversation. And it's a book, I hope, to inspire you to write yourself, uh, however you may, um, to break down forms of, of what the forms poetry can take in that our poetry because we are each poems, our poetries can be expressed in myriad ways and like, you know, go for it. Be raw with some polish. Be your own creative muse and, and you will understand when you see what I'm going to do when I say be your own fierce creative muse. So I'm indebted to Michael Marola uh, for his support as a publisher and editor, and uh, for... <laughs> he's a force on the poetry and writing scene. Uh, he's published so many people. Uh, he's brought fine writing to public attention, and I'm in, in such admiration. And my dear friend Luciano Iacobelli, who launched a book this afternoon. It was fabulous. He's another wonderful publisher on the Toronto scene. And, and he's very supportive of writing and painting ventures, including mine. 
Uh, and this has helped me to show my artwork and to publish. So I'd like to thank him. And I'd like to thank John Auten for offering a wonderful blurb uh, back cover and for his support as a poet friend and for the collaborations we've done and are continuing to do because we put in an application for the Honest Ed's uh, show in February. Um, Gabrielle Quigley appeared on the scene as Guernica's videographer and his reading of Tidal Fury and his understanding of the poetry and the book, book trailer he brilliantly edited and produced has been amazing. Many thanks. And Anna Geisler, Guernica's beautiful and hardworking publicist. Thank you. So lastly and most importantly, I would like to thank my two children, Adrian and Kira, one of whom is here, the other is still on her way from Owen Sound, who simply accepted a mother. No, she's here. Hi! Woo! Fantastic! Who simply accepted a mother who sometimes sat staring at nothing, with a pencil and a notebook in her lap, who was often mute, busy in the silent ways of poetry for their unending deep love and support. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> um, so first I begin with two poems about the mysteries of writing and, uh, and then I'm going to perform. So uh, be forewarned. <laughs> Writings of who? I seek who allows me to write. In the sunlit corridors, perhaps, my eclipsed twin, who answers through this writing? Who is the narrator within conversing with me in these words that I relay to you as we converse? Who haunts us from within? Who is writing? Surely not our speaking voice. Poetry evokes us like the gradual lightning of dawn. If the trope of light didn't burn, corrode our vision, that is. Sometimes I want to keep my secrets secret. Down the long corridors of time, our shadows cast into the future. The doors open and close and open, the spurious wind blowing through. Shutters cannot stay shut. We are ghosts moving through ourselves, haunted by ourselves. Can we have thoughtless words? a discourse bereaved of its cry. Insomnia. When I obsessed about writing the way I do a lover, I stopped sleeping. Now I keep a notebook beside me, its open white sheets to write blindly in the night with a pencil without seeing. Words flow between the imaginal and the real, reflecting, shaping. All day, tired and euphoric, such intense nights of lovemaking. Okay, so. <laughs> On the beach, I see her on sea walks in her long black skirt. 
she gazes out to sea. Grief on her face, wet from the spray of the rocks that she stands on and something indefinable, lit from within, but subtle, like sunset spilling out of her eyes. But the coast is empty. I don't know who I am. Me, her, or you, or a transfigured god, a Medusa lady, the curls in my hair tightly coiled in the sea spray, an image maker. Blue dancers leap and fall, disappearing bubbles of sea foam. You are the edge of the waves that tip over when the peak cannot hold itself aloft and falls like a dancer letting go of taut tension and plunging. Or perhaps it is words that fall into froth. We are standing on the shore of oceans that encompass the earth. Let me bathe in your words, salt rinsing raw passion our vision infinite as the skyline. Am I in love with you and who? My unbidden holy muse. The Medusa. In this emotional storm of words, she who turns life into art with her gaze. Flesh becomes stone, pigment, pixel, celluloid. The immortalizer who kills us. I weep on an altar of rainbow serpents on shed skin. The coils in my jewel-studded hair cut a mass of deathly serpent eyes. Muse. Medusa is my muse, and her snakes appear everywhere. Grammars. Monsieur, you are a reference outside the writing for whom the writing was written. Your eyes read as the reader's reads. You were conceived as a literary device, and then I discovered we knew each other intimately. Remember the night when you, without closure, embraced me, when I disappeared into your vastness, became lost in you, lost me, do you remember how we, two sighs enfolded in each other? Breath of love, I speak of romance tonight. Forgive me, monsieur, afterwards we did not speak of it. The surface of the water that resists before you fall in, that edge of sweetness. Now, mon amour, it is like we are sitting in a darkened room with a screen of scenes before us, our hands close but not touching. You are so far away. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda, for that insanely wonderful and vibrant performance.